Hi everyone, and welcome to Opus Modus. In this course, we are going to take a look at the most essential functions we can find in Opus Modus. The ones that, if you learn a little bit about them, will allow you to create wonderful new compositions. Um, but first, let's take a step back. Let's say you are completely new here. What is Opus Modus? Well, Opus Modus is a software designed to be ready for a new era of music composition. And I, I really mean this. It invites you to think about your music in a new way and thereby come up with new, unique ideas. And this is also the pitfall I, I see a lot with uh, beginning composers or, or rather people starting out with Opus Modus. They switch to this new sophisticated system, but they are still thinking about music in a more traditional way. And this definitely included me as well. And of course, revising the way you think is, is always a process that takes time. But I hope that this course can give you a, a glimpse of the power you can uh, unlock by learning to do so. So one of the things that makes Opus Modus different is uh, that we are invited to work in a parametric way. And this means that we can work on individual elements of a piece before combining them again. And naturally, this will require quite some confidence since rather than starting with the great melody, you might start with just the note lengths before applying pitch. Um, sometimes you can even build the complete structure of a piece without knowing anything about uh, the exact rhythms or the melodic lines or the harmony you're going to be using. So by doing so, and, and because of the design of many Opus Modus functions, we invite randomness in, in our composing process, uh, which is absolutely essential for getting out of your normal way of thinking. It simply allows you to, to well, I cannot say come up with new ideas, but it, it will show you new ideas that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. And there's, there's a lot more I have to say about this, and I could talk for an hour about how, how Opus Modus shaped and improved my musical brain. Um, but I think for our purposes here, it's best to just dive in and show you what it can do. So before I do that, I'll quickly remind you about the Opus Modus forum. Here we can ask questions when we undoubtedly get stuck at some point. And uh, you can also find information on updates. One of those recent updates is the Opus Modus GPT, which you can find right here. And this can be very useful as well when you get stuck. So I just quickly want to show it to you. For example, I can say, how can I put every element in a list in Opus Modus in a sublist? Let's see if it knows anything about that. All right, I can use the function MC list and we get an example. And this is exactly what I would recommend as well. So that's uh, definitely a useful new addition to Opus Modus as well. All right, with that out of the way, let's first take a look at Opus Modus notation. And the plan for this course is to first talk about very shortly about the Opus Modus syntax, and then we get into uh, essential functions um, separated into broader areas, such as pitches, lengths, dynamics, structure, and harmony, and at the very end, um, even creating your own score. Um, so when you follow the whole course, we will end up with the complete composition ready for distribution or post-production. But like I said, first the language. So what we see here is two blocks of Opus Modus notation. And um, I'm not going to explain all the symbols we can use within these uh, within Opus Modus notation. For that, I would refer you to introduction to OM and the language, which you can find in the documents folder. And this goes over the four elements, as they are called, which are length. Um, we have actually this is yeah length. We have pitches a little bit further down. And then we have our dynamics, velocities. And then lastly, we have our articulations. So all of those we can see here. The, in the first example here, we see that we start with a length symbol, S for 16th note. And then we have the pitches themselves. And we can evaluate this um, pressing Command E. And this will show the output in the listener, which in this case is more or less the same as what you put in. Now, if you want to listen to that, you would do Command 1 instead. which shows this in the notation uh, viewer. If you um, want to see this in a MIDI editor instead, or a piano roll, as it's commonly called, we can use Command 3. Um, we can use Command 4 if we just want to listen to it, but we don't need to see it. 
Now below here, we have a slightly more sophisticated example um, where we also see some articulations, mainly legato. And we see here some, these are uh, finger positions. So if we show this in a score, we can see our mezzo forte, we can see our legato right there, and here we can see the fingers that we can use. So this is just to show you that you can actually make very beautiful output um, just using this opus modus notation. Now I mentioned in the introduction that we can work in opus modus on the various elements of a score before combining them together. And to do this, we can use our first function right here, which is called OMN. And with any function we can do, we can select the name and do command D and we can show it inside the documentation. So here's the documentation for this OMN function. And at the top here, we always see the arguments that it takes. So it can take a type and then a notation itself. And then it's explained a little bit how this works. So in our case, when we want to, let's say we want to get the lengths from this piece of music from Bach, I can say length, and then I put in the variable and then I can evaluate that with command E and I see that we get all the lengths, which in this case are just 16 notes. Now we can do this because this is set to a variable and we can also set our own variable. So if I want to store this somewhere so that I can use it later on, I would say set F, which is um, what you typically use uh, within Lisp coding languages to set a variable. We can say set F and then we can say Bach length and then we set the list equal to that. And now when any, anywhere in the score, when I type Bach length and I press command E, we get the same result there. So similarly, we can do this for the, um, for the pitches as well. So we can say set F Bach pitch, and then we can say OMN pitch Bach. And now we get all the notes, which I could also listen to just by itself. Now, if you're wondering why they are eight notes right now rather than 16 notes, it's because we have extracted the pitch and we only are listening to the pitches and OMN at this point, or Opus Modus at this point, doesn't know anything about the actual duration. So it will use the default duration. And we can set that inside our settings. So uh, if we go to audition here, these are the settings that that we choose when, when something is not known. So for example, the default length is 1.8. If we're just working with rhythms, the default pitch to be used is C4. So um, yeah, that's why it looks like eight notes. Now we can also extract the velocities. So let's say Bach pitch, OMN, velocity, city, Bach. And we see our mezzo forte and our pianissimo. And then lastly, you can guess it, Articulation, OMM, Articulation, Bach. Now, uh, another thing you can see here, we use quite some parentheses. This is also a sort of side effect, or uh, might I say feature of the coding language that we're using here under the hood, which is Lisp. And Lisp is simply a language that is in love with parentheses. Uh, for a good reason. It creates a beautiful structure. Everything in the inner parentheses is evaluated first, and then the outer one but we'll get more experience with that. Don't worry too much. All right, so now we disassembled our OMN and we have everything separated into different variables. What we can do again, which might seem kind of useless right now, uh, but bear with me for a second, is we can now combine this again. So we can say make OMN and then we can say length is Bach length. And we can go to a new line just to make it clear to, to read. So pitch, Bach pitch. And then we have, uh, oh, actually, I see that I called this wrong. This should be Bach velocity. And then whenever we finish an, um, a variable, we have to evaluate it to put it inside the environment. Um, so I have to press Command E so that it's available. This is not something you know from other coding languages. For example, if you're used to Python, um, but in Lisp, that's simply how things work. So here we have velocity, Bach velocity. Well, velocity, and then lastly we have articulation. So with this we can now press command uh, one and then we can play this whole thing again. But the cool thing is, in this case, we can actually start to change some things. So for example, I could set the length here to, um, well, let's say 
16 notes, or we already have 16, let's say eight notes, and then I can try this again. And you see that we can only get one note, and that's because a length is used as the master list. So um, if there's only one length, it will stop after a length. What we can do to change that is we can set the total span here. So we have another keyword, span, and we can set that to pitch. Now, I'm not making all of this up. We can find all of this um, right here. So we can see that within the make om and function, we have our uh, first arguments there, and we see that we have a span argument. Um, and this, is, this will define the total length. We have there actually quite some other stuff as well that we can use. And usually with the documentation, we can find lots of examples on, on how to do so. One thing to note as well is that uh, with all of the functions, you can see um, ampersand key. And this means that all the arguments that follow here, they are keyword arguments, meaning that um, if we want to use them, we have to define the keyword. Um, the ones before that, are we can just pass them regularly without having to specify the keyword. Don't, uh, again, don't worry about it too much. You will get experience with this uh, without even knowing it. All right, so now that we've set the span to pitch, we can evaluate this again. And we have everything with eight notes. Of course, again, that's not very interesting. Um, we, maybe we want to change the rhythm a little bit, but leave the pitches the same. Well, for that, let's use our first real function. I mean, make all men is a function, but a little bit more of a traditional function it would be, for example, length divide. Um, for length divide, let's also take a look at the documentation. Again, that's command D. And we can click on it here. We can see, all right, this takes values, a list of values. Um, and this are, these are going to be the values of the divide. We're going to divide the rhythm. And th this will be the, the values that we use to do so. In fact, the first one here says um, how many values we want to divide. And the second one uh, talks about the division itself. So we can say, OK, we want to divide one event, and we want to divide it by two. And then uh, we put in our original list there. So let's evaluate this just by itself. So you can see that in every bar it divides one of the values. Now if I increase this number here, right? So with this we can now evaluate our whole region again and we should get the same Bach melody line but with a different rhythm. Of course, we can make this more extreme. Right, so that's a very, uh, very simple demonstration of what we can do. We could also now um, use another function such as pitch transpose minus seven, and we transpose the whole thing down uh, seven semitones. And this is exactly what we're going to do in this course. We're going to take at these individual elements, length, pitch, velocity, articulation. Um, with that, you already have a very good set of functions that you can use um, to, to make your compositions. But then we're also going to take a look at how to organize all of this and how to actually come up with a score. So basically, from all the functions that we have in Opus Modus, which we can find here, um, neatly divided into different categories, we can, um, we're going to choose the most common ones, the ones that um, will really be useful. And then from there on, you can um, experiment and expand your knowledge, which, um, if you want, can keep you busy the rest of your life, which is uh, pretty amazing, if you ask me. So in the next video, we're first going to take a look at um, lengths in detail and see how we can yeah, how we can use that element within Opus Modus and how to use various functions to process lengths, divide them, multiply them, etc. So I will see you there.